Hello everyone and welcome to Bridge is for Everyone. My name's Jad. This is episode 34 of the Learn to Play series. In this episode, you'll learn how to win a potential trick by leading up to the king. Let's start with a new deal. This is deal 003. You are the dealer. Here is your hand. This is similar to the hand you had in the previous two episodes, and once again you open one heart. And after West passes, partner responds with four hearts, and East passes. With a minimum opening hand, you pass partner's game bid, and West passes, ending the auction. You were the first of your partnership to bid hearts. So the contract is four hearts by you, South. This means you will play the hand and West will lead to the first trick. West leads the king of spades. Dummy places their hand face up on the table. As you learned in the previous episode, you immediately stop. You know this is the time for you to plan. As you learned in the previous episode, there are five steps in planning the play. Set the goal, identify your easy tricks and probable losers, identify any timing requirements, eliminate the opponent's trumps, and take control of the play and win. Let's look at each of these in turn. You are in a contract of four hearts and your goal is to make that contract. So, to succeed, you'll need to win at least 10 tricks. Now identify easy tricks by considering each suit in turn, starting with trumps. Your partnership has eight trumps, leaving the opposition with five. Your partnership holds the top five trumps, meaning that you should win five tricks in hearts and your opponent should win none. You make a mental note of this. You have three spades, and partner has four, but only the ace will win a trick. You count one win and two losses. You have two diamonds in each hand. In previous hands, you held the ace of diamonds, but this time you do not. You can't be certain of winning any diamond tricks. So what do you do? In a previous episode, you learned that a suit with the king and at least one small card counted as half a quick trick. You apply the same rule here. You count half a winning trick and one and a half losing tricks. You have the ace, king and queen of clubs. These will win three tricks with no losses. You have a total winning count of nine and a half tricks and a losing count of three and a half tricks. This gives a total of 13 tricks, equal to the number of tricks that will be played. But it leaves you half a trick short of your contract. What does this mean? It means that only 12 of the tricks have a clear winner. The 13th trick could be won by either side. In this deal, the only way for you to do this is to win with the King of Diamonds. So how can you do this? There is no guaranteed way for the King of Diamonds to win. But you can maximise the chance of it winning. Let's look at how to do this. You have only two diamonds in each hand, so you will have to play the king on the first or second diamond trick. Your opponents hold the remaining nine diamonds, so it's very likely that each of them has at least two diamonds. Consider where the ace of diamonds can be. What will happen if east holds the ace of diamonds? Whenever you play the king from dummy, east will play the ace on top of it and win the trick. You cannot win with the king, 
But what will happen if West holds the ace of diamonds? Whenever West plays the ace, you play the three from dummy, leaving the king to win the next diamond trick. So your only hope of winning a trick with the king is to assume that West holds the ace. This is a very common approach in bridge. If you need the cards to be a particular way to make your contract, assume that they are, and then play to win. I summarise this as, assume you can win, and then play to win. But how do you do this with these diamonds? Here is the answer. You lead a small diamond from your hand towards the king in dummy. This is called leading up to the king. If West has the ace, a decision needs to be made to play the ace or not. If West plays the ace, you will play the three from dummy. You lose this trick, but can now win a trick with the king of diamonds. But what do you do if West does not play the ace? Remember, you have assumed that West has the ace. So if West doesn't play the ace, you need to play the king of diamonds from dummy and hope your assumption was correct. Remember, if East has the ace, there is nothing you could do to win. You won't know what will happen until you play the hand but you make the assumption and add this to your plan. You now have the 10 winning tricks you need for your contract if your assumption is correct. Next, you look at the timing of the play. First, consider timing of winning tricks and losing tricks in each suit. You have no losers in hearts, so that's easy you change the unnecessary losses to green. You have one winning card in spades, which you can use to win the first spade trick. So you don't need to lose a spade trick to make that winning trick. That means the spade losers are not necessary losses. You have already decided how to play the diamond suit. You will lead up to the king and assume that West holds the ace. You expect to lose to the ace and then win with the king so you can count the ace as a necessary loss. And with the club suit, you have the top three cards and need not lose any tricks before winning with them. Looking at the totals, you see that you need to deal with the ace of diamonds by leading up to the king of diamonds before you can win the 10 tricks you need to secure the contract. The fourth step in planning is to know that you need to draw trumps as soon as other aspects of your plan allow. And finally, because you have no need to lose tricks in spades before taking your winners, you can take control immediately by winning the first trick. Putting these steps together gives you the following simple plan. First, you will win with the ace of spades. Then you will draw trumps to remove them as a threat. Then you will lead up to the king of diamonds to remove the necessary loss. This may cause you to lose the lead, so you plan to take control again. You may lose some tricks before you can do so, but not enough to jeopardize your contract. And finally, you will win the required tricks to make your contract. The first phase in your plan is to win with the Ace of Spades. So you call for the Two of Spades from Dummy. East plays the Eight of Spades, and you play the Ace of Spades to win the trick. That's one trick to you. Let's make a note of the trick count. Phase 1 of your plan has been completed, so you move to Phase 2. Phase 2 tells you to draw trumps. You can see the 8 trumps your partnership holds, leaving 5 with the opposition. You make a mental note that there are 5 trumps out. 
You won the previous trek, so you lead the two of hearts. And West plays the five of hearts. Your partnership has the ace, king, queen, jack and ten of hearts. So your opponents can't beat any of these cards. You call for the jack, knowing it will win. And East plays the six. That's another trick for you and two trumps drawn from the opposition. You lead the Queen of Hearts from Dummy, knowing it will win. East plays the Seven of Hearts. You play the Four of Hearts from your own hand, and West plays the Eight of Hearts. You win the trick and draw two more trumps from the opposition. There is still one trump out, so you lead the Three of Hearts from Dummy. East plays the Nine of Hearts. You play the Ten of Hearts, knowing it will win. And West, who has no more hearts, plays the Four of Diamonds. You have won another trick and drawn the last trump from the opposition. This completes Phase 2 of your plan. You go on to Phase 3, lead up to the King of Diamonds. As planned, you lead the Two of Diamonds from your hand. West plays the Jack of Diamonds. West has not made life easy for you. West may not have the ace, but you follow the plan and play the King of Diamonds. It's East's turn to play. If East has the ace, then you cannot make your contract. East plays the Five of Diamonds. Your king has won the trick. It is the extra trick you need to make your contract. You move on to step four of the plan. Take control. You have managed to win the extra trick without losing control of the lead. So step four is not necessary. You move on to step five. Win. Once again, you choose to play the clubs first. You lead the two of clubs from dummy. East plays the seven. You play the king knowing it will win. And West plays the five. That's another trick for you. You lead the four of clubs, West plays the eight of clubs, you play the queen of clubs from dummy, and East plays the jack of clubs. That's seven tricks for you. You lead the ace of clubs from dummy, East plays the six of diamonds, you play the six of clubs, and West plays the nine of clubs. That's another trick for you. You have eight tricks and still hold the ace and king of trumps, which are each guaranteed to win a trick. Your contract is secure. There are no opportunities to win extra tricks, so you lead the three of clubs from dummy. East plays the eight of diamonds. You win the trick with the king of hearts, and West plays the ten of clubs. That's another trick for you. You lead the Ace of Hearts. West plays the Jack of Spades. You play the Four of Spades from Dummy. And East plays the Nine of Diamonds. That makes ten tricks for you, completing the plan and making the contract. No matter what you do, your opponents will win the remaining three tricks. West claims the three tricks and shows his cards all of which are winners. That's three tricks to your opponents. You have played according to your plan and won the 10 tricks you needed to make the contract. You assumed that West had the Ace of Diamonds and led up to the King to ensure success if that was the case. You knew that if East held the Ace, then your contract would be impossible. Congratulations on a good win. I urge you to use my free web app to practice what you learn in this series. The link to the app is in the description. This episode has covered more of the basics of bridge. It showed you how to assume success in order to plan and how to lead up to the king to maximize the likelihood of success. 
In future episodes, I'll cover everything else you'll need to be a confident and successful bridge player. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel. Until next time, this is Jad reminding you that bridge is for everyone.